welcome you to the March 21st, 2024 regular meeting of the Enlarged City School District of Middletown. I call that meeting to order at this time, and we're going to ask if everybody would please stand um, for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Curtis Rett, after that, I'm asking if everybody could remain standing um, for a moment of silence, please. Mr. Rett. Thank you, President William. Karina. Moments of silence this evening. The first moment of silence is for Renato Almonte. Renato Almonte, the uncle of one of our board members. Denise. Mr. Almonte, I did not know him, but from what I heard and my understanding is that he was a great family man. He raised a large family, nine children, very hard worker. He ran his own business, and not an easy uh, business in the food and hotel industry. So he will be missed, and our condolences to Denise Romero. The second moment of silence is for Noah Dan Dunnitz. And Mr. Dunnitz, to me, is a portrait in courage, and here's why. He graduated from Middletown High School. In 1952, he developed polio. And at that time, for the young people who don't know, polio was what today COVID is or was, and even more serious in some cases. Many people die, especially young people. Many people wound up in wheelchairs, as Mr. Dunnis did for life. Some people wound up in iron lungs. It was a very frightening time in the country until the salt vaccine. Well, Mr. Dunnitz, he was in a wheelchair for life. However, he managed to run a business family business, Gordon's in Goshen, which I bought equipment from him, a very reliable business. He served his community in a number of, of instances. He graduated from Boston University with the, uh, with the handicap. So please also remember uh, Dan Donitz in your thoughts and prayers. And his wife, Phyllis, was an instructor for many years in this district, a very dedicated individual. I met her at the uh, service again, and uh, she's just as alert as ever. Uh, the third moment of silence and the final moment of silence is for Suzanne Krantz. I didn't know Suzanne, but she was a crossing guard for the Middletown School District for a number of years. And crossing guards, are, it, it's not an easy position. Uh, you're out in all kinds of weather, and sometimes your interaction with uh, individuals is not all that pleasant. So please remember Suzanne Krantz in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Perino. Uh, mission of the Enlarged City School District of Middletown, uh, Mr. Freddie Williams. Thank you. We strive to provide fiscally sound educational opportunities in a safe environment that continuously supports our diverse student population. We will enable all students to graduate, to reach their full potential, to become lifelong learners, and to be competitive, productive members of society. Thank you, sir. Uh, roll call, uh, Mrs. Moncherie. Mrs. Blumenau. Here. Mr. Estrada. Here. Mr. Perino. Here. Mr. Rett. Here. Ms. Romero. Here. Ms. Tobiasen. Here. Mr. Freddie Williams. Here. Pastor Williams. Here. 
Mr. Mitchell Williams. Thank you. All right, thank you. Moving on, need a motion for the approval of the agenda tonight. So move. Second. Uh, have, um, who moved, who moved? John Perino moved and oh, seconded second. by Mrs. Blumenau. Uh, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It so passes. Um, I want to uh, go back and uh, real quick and read this disclaimer. Uh, the agenda was prepared in advance of tonight's meeting and the final agenda for tonight's meeting is subject to change at the time of the meeting. Any changes will be noted at the time they are made and again after the meeting on the public board minutes, which are available on the district's website. I'm going to ask um, Ms. Romero if she could read that same disclaimer in, sp in Spanish, please. Esta agenda fue preparada antes de la reunión de esta noche. La agenda final para la reunión de esta noche está sujeta a cambios en el momento de la reunión. Cualquier cambio se anotará en el momento en que se realice. Y nuevamente, después de la reunión, en las actas de la Junta Pública que están disponibles en el sitio web del distrito. Thank you. Uh, moving on, moving on, I want to entertain a motion for the approval of the regular uh, meetings minutes March 7th, 2024. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second on that. Moved by Mr. Rett, seconded by, who's second? I had a couple, by Mr. Perino, thank you. Um, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It so passes. Now I entertain a motion for the approval of the board workshop minutes, March 14th, 2024. Second. Moved by Mr. Estrada, seconded by Mr. Freddie Williams. Any discussion on that? John? The president? Yes, sir. I just want to say, and I think it's a sentiment of the whole board, that those workshops were excellent. I'm sorry, say again. Excellent workshops. Yes. Great. Yes. Yes. And we'll, uh, I'm definitely going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, but I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? It so passes. Thank you. Moving on to action items. Action items A, um, administrative approval of personnel memorandum 16A numbers one and two. May I have a motion, please? Second. Moved by, by Mr. Bison, seconded by Mr. Perino. Any discussion here? This is on 16A. Uh, 16A, numbers one through two, administrative. I'm sad and happy. That's bad. <laughs> Agreed. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So passes. Uh, action item B, approval of personnel memorandum 16B, uh, numbers one through 12, instructional. May I have a motion, please? So move. Moved by Mr. Perino, seconded by Mr. Estrada. Any discussion here? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? It so passes, thank you. Uh, action item C, approval of personnel memorandum 16C, numbers one through six, non-instructional. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Rett, seconded by Mrs. Blumenau. Any discussion here? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? It so passes, thank you. Action item D, approval of financial memorandums 14D, numbers one through seven. So moved. Moved by Mr. Perino, seconded by Mr. Freddie Williams. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? It so passes. Moving on to action item E, approval of special services memorandum 13E, numbers one and two. May I have a motion, please? Second on that. Moved by Mr. Estrada, seconded by Mr. Perino. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? It so passes, thank you. Um, action item F needs no action. There are no, there are no change orders on tonight. Uh, so we'll move on to um, action item uh, G, 
uh, approval of legal notice regarding the annual district meeting and election. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Moved by Mr. Estrada, seconded by Mr. by Mr. Perino. Any discussion here? Now, maybe if the superintendent, for the public's sake, can give the dates out that are part of that approval. The district isn't that what we're doing? See, you mean for this is this 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 is for this is for the annual um, election? Yeah, the dates for the election. The, the dates for the election. Twenty first. The dates for the school, public, school budget election are on Super Tuesday, which is May 21st. Thank you. Take note of that, May 21st. All right. Um, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So passes. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on um, to action item H, approval to amend the 2023-24 school year instructional calendar. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Rett, seconded by Mr. Tobiasen. Um, discussion or explanation, if we could, of what those, what those changes are. Sure, there's one change to the um, instructional calendar for this year, and it is to provide a shortened session day for middle school young people only. And that is in order to provide um, our educators and staff time to um, do uh, operations items in order to prepare for the transition uh, that'll take place in June. Um, when we begin the construction at Twin Towers. More information um, to come on that matter as well as town halls that will be upcoming. So it's May 31st, the addition of a shortened session day. Thank you. Any other discussion here? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? So passes, thank you. Um, Action item I, approval to amend the superintendent's employment contract. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Perino, seconded by Mrs. Blumenau. Any discussion here? Seeing none. Do I, do I need to read this? Okay. Uh, be, it, be it so resolved that for the 2023-24 school year only, because the superintendent of schools has been unable to utilize a majority of the vacation days that she has allotted. The Board of Education hereby approves an amendment to the superintendent's employment contract and should permit the superintendent to buy back an additional five days of vacation that she has been unable to use uh, for a total of up to a maximum of 15 days of vacation that are eligible to be brought back by the end of the 2023-24 school year. Except as set forth in this resolution, all other terms and conditions set forth in the superintendent's employment contract shall remain in full force and effect. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Oh, okay. You start, let's, let's go back. I've read it. Now, may I have a motion for this? So Again. move. Moved by Mr. Perino, seconded. Had that by Mrs. Blumenau. All right, now discussion. All right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you, so passes. Uh, action item J, approval of donation from the city of Middletown. So moved. Moved by Mr. Perino, seconded by Mr. Estrada, right? Okay, any discussion here? Oh, yes, can you give us a little explanation of what that donation is? Oh. Absolutely. Yeah, sure, I'm gonna do a mini um, presentation during the superintendent's report, um, but this is, um, we graciously accept the donation provided to us from the city of Middletown, which is for $5,000 a year okay. for a total of $15,000 in order for us to um, competitively bid um, for New York State Public High School Athletic Association events. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you to the city. And any other discussion here? Is that fine? Yes. I think it's great uh, the way that the city and the district has uh, really strengthened the relationship within the last couple of years that I've been on the board. So just uh, from the board, we appreciate the city of Middletown. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tobias. 
I see that the mayor and one of the council members from the city are here. Are you going to take care of it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So, any other discussion? We're grateful. Collaboration. We're grateful. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It so passes. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to uh, board member recognitions and community updates. Ken, um, when, 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 would, when do you want to have the mic? You want to do it later? You want to do it during your superintendent update? Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Yes, let's do that. Well, well, let's move on to our, uh, our recognitions and community updates. Um, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Perino, okay. uh, would you take this part, the Elf Student of the Month for March? March, okay, thank you. Uh, would the uh, administrators of Middletown High School step to the podium, also the Student of the Month? And also, of course, the Elks. So come on right up here. So good evening, members of the Board of Education and our Middletown community. I'm here tonight to celebrate our Elks Student of the Month, a 2022 cohort scholar, Naima Francis. Yeah. It's my privilege to highlight some of the amazing things Naima has done thus far as a Middletown Midi. Over the course of her two years within Middletown High School, Naima has obtained a 93.4 grade point average. Let me hear that wow again, guys. Yeah. This scholar athlete has clearly excelled academically. Over the past two years, Naima has truly excelled in her language classes, achieving high 90s in both ELA and her Spanish courses. She also states that she has a passion for sciences, taking chemistry as a 10th grade student, which that's typically an 11th grade course that we take here. Um, she also states that she really has a passion for her global course as well. Um, so Naima's drive, dedication, and well-roundedness to her academics is an inspiration to any scholar or adult that gets to know her. Additionally, Naima's teachers have stated that she displays high effort and high achievement, a leader inside and outside of this classroom, and is dedicated is a dedicated scholar to her studies. Naima's efforts inside the classroom express that she is a serious scholar that approaches her coursework with preparation, dedication, and enthusiasm. In summation, Naima is a great model of what it means to be a scholar athlete for our Midi's past, present, and future. With her academic career flourishing here at Middletown, I would be remiss if I did not mention Naima's athletic career here. In her past two years here, we have seen Naima trailblaze her way to a successful athletic career as a track and field sprinter. Throughout her indoor and outdoor track seasons, Naima has reached milestones such as being voted a New York State Scholar Athlete for indoor track. She's become a two-time state qualifier in the 55-meter dash and 4 by 2 relay, and is a two-time national qualifier for the 60-meter dash and 4 by 2 Additionally, she is a two-time reigning MVP award winner of indoor track here at Middletown High, which she's nominated by her um, coaches. And she has the most wins and points scored for females in track and field in the last two seasons. These accomplishments are just the start for this swift sprinter. It is without a doubt Naomi, uh, Naima will continue to shine, represent, and set the standard for our Middletown track and field team and all other scholar athletes. It is my great pleasure to be up here tonight with her. Over the past two years, the 2022 cohort has seen Naima come into her own as a scholar, as an athlete, and also a well-rounded individual that I'm sure we all will continue to hear and see shine at Middletown. I wish you more than success here and look forward to seeing you speed toward your finish lines and, any expectation, and crush any expectations or goals you may have going forward. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, Nina. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I just
just want to say thank you for this amazing award. It is an honor to be um, presented this way and just um, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Would you like to say something? New words? Just on behalf of the Middletown Elks Lodge, we are so pleased to give this certificate to Naima. Uh, oh my gosh, hearing about all your accomplishments, that's just fantastic. Uh, I was awful. I couldn't even make it into chemistry. So <laughs> to hear that you, you're already in chem at 10th grade and all those um, athletic achievements, fantastic. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> And we also have with us, Mr. Frado did the honors tonight. And we have uh, Mr. Donahue and the executive principal, Dr. William, who's going to be an assistant superintendent. And we will miss her greatly. I miss you too. And uh, Mr. Donahue, of course, is going to be the new interim executive principal. And uh, Mr. Shady is going to be the associate. Principal. So that was approved this evening. So if you want members of the family of our distinguished guests tonight, if you'd like to uh, get in on that photo, just go right into the uh, instructional room. Any Thank you. Members would like to get in there? Gonna, it's their time. We're gonna let, I'm gonna let them have it. It's their, this is this is this is about her. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We're we're um we're gonna we're gonna go around the table and do our um, community updates um, from the board of education members. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start on this side with Mr. Estrada tonight. We have a lot of people to recognize, so I'm gonna pass. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. What's here? Um, a few things. Twin Towers has continued to hold the Youth Leadership Academy every Tuesday, hosted by the Middletown Police. Um, tomorrow is Twin Towers Middle School College and Career Day with keynote speaker, Mr. McNeil, and this is their flyer. Um, they will have classroom presenters with diverse backgrounds and careers. They will be hosting Beyond Border Lessons on Overcoming Adversity, where the scholars will hear about different paths to success. And on 4.30, Twin Towers will have their encore concert from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Romero, um, Mr. Bison. Just a reminder that the OM team at Monhegan is preparing for our trip to Syracuse for the state competitions on uh, Saturday and Sunday of April 11th and 12th. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, thank you. This is Blumenau. I'm just going around, I'm going around the circle today. Going around the circle. All right, thank you. Um, on, on March 31st and April 7th, um, will we'll be a free prom dress event at Temple Sinai, which we've, this is, um, this has been done every year for, uh, for a long time. I don't even know how many years. It's gotta be many. eight or nine years now. I think last year was eight. I think this year is nine. Um, so before you start shopping for prom dresses, I really recommend you stop by and just see the incredible selection. Mm. These are dresses that are new. Some of them are brand new, still have the tags on them. There are men's suits. There are shoes. There are handbags. Um, even if you've got an appointment to go to the ritziest store to get your prom dress, give it a shot because there are um, there's really an incredible selection. Um, also, uh, the um, the committee that puts this prom dress together, prom dress event together, includes not only Temple Sinai but also the United Presbyterian Thrift Shop and the uh, Minnesink Rotary Club. So. Several schools will be participating this year and attending, so I really want our middies to go first. So it starts at um, it starts at 10 a.m. I'm sorry, it starts at noon. It went down noon um, to 4:30, and that's at Temple Sinai right in Middletown on 75 Highland Avenue. It is free. They, the dresses are free. 
There will be haircuts. There will be um, accessories. It, it's really a great event. So take advantage of it and tell your friends about it um, so you can participate. And thank you to Josephine and Ed Bloomfield, who are um, wonderful friends of the city and the district, for spearheading this event every year for, um, for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bloomfield. Pastor, a question on that. Paula, when can you donate um, either gowns or suits? Anytime. Anytime. They just, they really do make sure they categorize everything, put everything into sizes before the event. So, um, you know, way before the event, I'm pretty sure things are all set up already. They've right, been doing, that's what I was meaning. You can go onto Facebook and, and check it out too. Um, yeah, so and just go to the temple possible. every you can drop day it off to donate. At the temple. Thank yes. you. During the day, usually from uh, nine, nine to four, nine Thank to three. You. Awesome. Thank you very much. Mr. Rett. Good evening. Yes. Um, one of the local organizations, uh, God's Hearts for Women, is having a dinner tomorrow at the Senior Citizen Center across from, um, yeah, across, yeah, well, the Mulberry House, across from the police station. Um, it's free, and it, uh, they have a, a real good focus. They just want to bring women together and have some conversations about what's going on in the community. Um, we had a posting. I guess it didn't show up, but um, otherwise, yeah, here we go. <laughs> uh, the focus is called Breaking Bread, Building Connections. So it's a free dinner, and um, we welcome any parents in the community to come on by and just be able to chat it up with some other local members. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Perino. Thank you, President Williams. Uh, as the uh, uh, members of the Elks uh, uh, Council were leaving, uh, they told me that uh, we are arranging a dinner for the students of the month and also the students who help uh, during the year with the various events of the Elks, which goes back to uh, the community in one form or the other. Uh, so that's one thing. The other announcement I want to make is that this Saturday is a Kiwanis pancake breakfast at the Middletown High School Rain or Shine from 7 to noon. Uh, it's pancakes and all the trimmings plus raffle tickets. It's kind of a nice uh, morning. The members of the Key Club and uh, NGROTC plus members of the Student Council will be uh, serving. And of course, the Kiwanis sponsors the uh, key club, uh, Kiwanis Educated Youth. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Kevin Witt for helping publicize this, uh, the uh, uh, pancake breakfast. And I, I want to wish everyone, for those of us who celebrate Easter, a happy Easter. For the uh, Jewish brethren who are celebrating or will celebrate, uh, celebrate Purim, a, a happy Purim. And for those individuals who are involved in the month of Ramadan, a Ramadan Kareem to you also. Continuing on a moment, a couple quick shout outs to uh, members of our staff here. Uh, one of the members of the staff, Amanda Mita, who helped, uh, who helped arrange a trip uh, to the Senior Center by our players. Katie Lucas, Twin Towers Middle School, the chamber singers at the uh, State of the City message did a nice job. Caroline Priscilla, who sang God Bless America. <clears throat> and I mentioned Amanda Mita. Uh, another announcement, the No Kid Hungry program, No Kids Hungry program. Uh, and of course, that is a Lions, Kid, uh, Lions Club program. Uh, Glennis Foglia coordinates this. And I want to give a shout out to Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church, who the Knights and the uh, Columbiettes are collecting donations to keep the program going. Presently, there are 108 of our students involved in this. And remember, the program started with 10 students, 10 backpacks. What the program does is feed students on the weekend. Continuing on, uh, Megan uh, Gugliata. We talked about the strings program last meeting. Uh, she has uh, shepherded the program right along, and she began uh, the program. She does a nice job. She is an instructor at the high school. And I have more, but I, I want to uh, 
I'll, I'll save that because I don't want to stop in the middle. So my time's almost up. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Freddie Williams. Um, I have a couple of things to talk about, uh, but I will wait till next week for the sake of time. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I also am, uh, don't have much tonight, just just other than to say, well, I do have a lot, but just to, just to say that there is a lot of things going on. And um, and it, it would behoove us um, to, um, you know, watch watch the, the website and um, and the f Facebook pages um, to see all of the wonderful things that's happening right now, currently um, in the district and not just in the district, in our in our city, in our town. Um, so many wonderful things that are going on, and, uh, and so I'll, I'll leave it at that, um, again, for the sake of time tonight. Uh, thank you. Moving on to uh, public participation, opportunity to address the board. Um, the board will designate a portion of its meeting agenda to public comment for a period of up to 40 minutes. Each speaker will be allowed up to four minutes. Public is not permitted to discuss topics or matters involving specific individuals. Speakers uh, must sign in and or matters involving specific individual speakers must sign in prior to the meeting, uh, prior to speaking, I'm sorry. Uh, speakers are not permitted to cede their time to other speakers. Um, uh, so we open, up the, we open up the desk at this time to anybody who would like to come. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, and uh, um, before you come, uh, Ms. Romero, would you read that same, that same statement in Spanish for me, please? La Junta, la Junta designará una parte de su agenda de reunión para comentarios públicos por un periodo de hasta 40 minutos. A cada persona se le permitirá hasta cuatro minutos. No se permite al público discutir temas o asuntos que involucren a personas específicas. Las personas deben registrarse, firmar antes de hablar. Y las personas no pueden ceder su tiempo a otras personas. Thank you very much. Uh, well, Dr. Dr. Well, Johnson, evening. you're first. My Welcome. name is Paul Johnson. I'm a guy who read a book, but I read a different book. Just so you know, I'm still in Black History Month because I only get eight minutes a month. You guys have a lot more time to talk about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I will be joining Twin Towers tomorrow playing the role of a veterinarian. I'm looking forward to that. So if I gave you a card and said, race, your thoughts, six words, what would you write? Here's what some people wrote. My beautiful black boys deserve hope. Pay no attention to my packaging. Race, is someone expected to win? Are you what they call white? We won't make it like this. Be twice as good as everyone. This apartment is no longer available. Sag your pants, lose your chance. Yellow, neither white nor black enough. White guilt when I check Hispanic. You need to leave, white boy, spoken to a Native American in a black neighborhood. My name is Jamal, I'm white. I still cry 51 years later. I'm a redneck, not a racist. Separate only your laundry by color. Bullies grow up, black boys die. There will always be a they. So spoiler alert, I just asked you to do that but it's not a, new, not a new idea. A woman named Michelle Mar Norris started the race card project 11 years ago and distributed cards like that and got 500,000 responses to it. And so she published this book two months ago. It's a little fatter than Uptown. It's more contemporary. Our Hidden Conversations, What Americans Really Think About Race and Identity. The Jacket States, <clears throat> Our Hidden Conversations offers an honest, if sometimes uncomfortable, conversation about race, permitting us to eavesdrive on deep-seated thoughts, private discussions, long-submerged memories. It reminds us that in times of great division, honesty, grace, and a willing ear can build a bridge toward understanding and maybe even empathy. The Black Jacket, the black of the jack, back of the jacket, rather, has a review by Eric Holder. An important, compelling work. In an extremely unique way, Norris captures private, poignant, and instructive stories that are a guide to racial knowledge that can lead to the understanding and healing we so desperately need. Ultimately, she shows that we need not fear the issues we must all confront. Even though it's a big fat book, it's a quick read. Uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of responses, and I offer you the challenge to 
Fill out the card if you choose. Put it on the refrigerator. Share it with each other. Share it with me. Or disregard the idea. But I do hope you would consider reading the book. Because I don't care who you are, what you look like, or what you think. This book will make you think harder. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Hello, my name is Joe Perez. Got a couple of issues here. This is my first time here. I never spoke up on this board before, but I'm not happy with the board. This is about past restrictions. The board is allowing Ms. Creedon to do this. How? How can that be? Is this, is this a school or a correctional facility? You guys are implementing policies of, of, of correctional facilities. You got to walk out children all over the place? What is that? I don't understand. This is the whole board, everybody here? I, I see a bunch of blacks and Puerto Ricans and a couple of whites. I wish this whole board was white, to be honest with you, because my own, my own brothers and sisters here are selling us out. What is this? You guys are sellouts, straight up. I'm Puerto Rican, I was born and raised in the ghetto, I know what it is, now I'm up. But what you guys are doing is, and, you, and you've been here, Williams, Dr. Mr. What, uh, what, Pastor Williams, whatever you are, you just selling out your own community, talking about there's so many great things happening in this community. Ain't nothing happening good in this community because you guys are not doing the right thing. You guys are the ones that pull the strings, the strings from Ms. Creta, right? You guys are elected. Do you even know what that means? Do you even know what the elected means? That means you guys are the boss. You guys tell her what to do. Don't sell yourselves out. What the hell's going on here? I got to sit here? Don't even make no sense. Then we got... Wait, who's Mitch? Is he here? No, he's not here. He's not here? Because I heard he was a school board member. I don't know who he is, but he's an ex-con. So I'm sure he doesn't want his students to be walked around, be chained, practically chained up. We're walking here, walking there. And with 2,700 students, you guys don't have the amount of security or nothing. I see fights all the time, and, and that happened. You guys are sellouts, bro. You guys, I wish this whole board was white because the white people would not allow... Because, you know what, they'll say, oh, no, we can't do this. We can't allow Ms. Creedon to do this because that's racist. We can't, no, we can't do that. And then, in closing, Pastor Williams, I know you love to invite people on your porch, but never commit. Never commit. I would invite you onto my porch, but that's beneath me. I would invite you into my home if you wasn't such a sellout. You are the biggest sellout on this board. A true Uncle Tom, true definition of Jim Crow. That's your new name to me, Jim Crow. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good evening. My name is Carol Cuevas. I am. Um, I've been in the community for a very long time. Um, I currently work at Maple Hill Elementary School, and to piggyback off of what he's saying is. What you're saying is not true. I work at Maple Hill School, elementary kids. Them kids are, no, them kids, they hit monitors, they curse at you, they hit the teachers. There is no respect at all. It doesn't make any sense. There needs to be accountability with the parents because as these kids get older, it's going to get worse. There needs to be zero tolerance with these kids. It is horrible to have to go to work and get kicked and hit by a second grader. It doesn't make any sense. And if you do something to the child, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to go to jail or the parents want to fight you. It doesn't make any sense. There needs to be accountability. These parents need to be accountable for what these kids are doing. Like I said, it's just going to get worse as they get older. And you guys know me. I've been in this community for a very long time. You know my kids. You know my history. But something definitely needs to be done. There needs, I don't know, but something needs to be done. It's horrible to have to go to work and be hit by a second grader, a fourth grader cursing you out, fifth graders. It doesn't make any sense. They have no respect. 
it, it's just horrible. And that's why I wanted to come in here today to let you guys know. Something needs to be done with these little kids. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Hi, good evening. My name is Connie Quinones. I have a high school student here. Um, I'm a little offended by whatever the woman said, these parents. These parents are not all parents, so. Well, not all parents. Okay, anyways, parents. that's what I had to say. Okay, so in any case, I'm here to make a public statement because I know you guys don't respond. I want it back in writing but I want to make it public so that we don't get to a point where it says, oh, we didn't know you addressed us, blah, blah, blah. So I need these questions answered. I need to know why we have to go on pass restriction for the entire rest of the school year, why such a harsh punishment, and why do all the 95% of the good kids or the kids that make good choices are still being penalized for the ones that are making bad choices. We are putting in the kids' mentality that we all suffer when someone does something bad. That is not something good to teach our children. We do not punish all the kids when the 2% act up. What are we teaching our children? The whole team pays for it? Not okay, not acceptable. What is the time frame? Security has to respond when a child has to go to their house, when a child has to go to the bathroom. What if they are not available, then what? Do we have female security guards escorting the girls to the girls' bathroom, or are there males? Where are we with the alternative school? This is the start. This is something new. I want these questions answered, and I want it in writing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. All right. If there's nobody else, we're going to move on. Um, there are letters available on board docs, a letter available on board docs that you can go to board docs and read. I'm going to turn it over into the hands of the superintendent for our uh, superintendent updates at this time. Mrs. Creedon. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. What a wonderful night to celebrate our young people. Um, tonight, we have Mrs. Janet Farrar, Ms. Herm, Ms. Adams Brazil, and Mrs. Topico for our Scholastic Arts Recognitions. And just a little side note, um, we got a sneak peek at some of the artwork that they are going to be celebrating this evening if, as you walked into the um, the um, lobby area out here, all of the artwork that's hung up on the hallways is um, representative of our um, incredible young people um, and the accomplishments that they've made. So, um, friends, come on up. Good evening. Thank you, Superintendent Creedon. Um, my name is Janet Ferreira. And I am very excited to be here tonight. I've had the pleasure to work on the Scholastic Arts program um, and since we created our regional affiliate 15 years ago. And tonight, we are recognizing the artistic accomplishments of Middletown's gold, silver, and portfolio winner. To put their accomplishments in a deeper perspective, I'm just going to take a few minutes to provide some background information on the National Scholastic Program and our regional alliance. The mission of the National Scholastic Arts Program is to identify young people with exceptional artistic talent and present their work through, to the world through the Scholastic Art and Writing Award program. This national program has been around now for 101 years. It is for eligible for students in grades 7 through 12, and there are over 250,000 submissions of students across the world, across the United States and Canada, each year within the art 
piece of the program, there are 17 art categories. And this year, our regional alliance had submissions in each of the categories for the first time in 15 years. On a regional basis, which is our alliance, the Hudson Valley Art Alliance, Middletown created this alliance back in 2008 and 9. So this is actually our 15th year of celebration in this program. And it is uniquely structured. It's the only alliance in the 100 alliances structured to include four different counties, Orange, Ulster, Sullivan, Orange, Sullivan, Duchess, and Ulster. And we partner with other people, other BOCES, to support this. This year, we had over 600 students and over 2,600 submissions with 25 schools across the four regions. So think about it. The students in, that we have here at Middletown, these are the categories, these are the national guidelines of who the winners can be of those 2,600 students. Only five to 7% of all the submissions can be gold and silver. That's a requirement, five to 7%. Seven to 10% are silver winners and honorable mention are 10 to 15%. Very, very small percentages. So the significance of our students, of any student winning in the gold and silver and honorable mention category is significant. In terms of the adjudication, it is a blind adjudication, which means our jurors do not know the identi identities of the students who submit their work. There is a freedom of expression within this program that is a requirement, which means no work is disqualified based on the, con uh, on the basis of its content. And importantly, the criteria for the judges in the adjudication are based on three areas, originality, technical skill, and the emergence of a person, personal vision or voice. In all of Middletown's winnings for this year, we earned 381 awards, 12 gold, 20 silver, 15 honorable mention, and we had an additional almost 300 participating awards. I am really excited tonight because in addition to the winning results that are here, we have the highest number of gold and silver winners, um, 32 pieces in the last few years. So our artwork and our student participation is getting stronger and more significant, which is a reflection on the students and our teachers. Additionally, we had multiple students who won gold and silver awards. We had five students who won more than one gold or silver award. We had our first portfolio winner in 15 years. And we had our first video submission, which was a gold winner. You're going to see both of those pieces tonight. So there was a really, this was an exciting year for Middletown in this program. We have already had our regional um, Recognition, we had a big ceremony at SUNY New Paltz on February 2nd. We had over 800 students and families participate across our regional alliance. And we had the exhibition of all gold and silver winners for all the schools um, up for almost the whole month of February, the 2nd to the 29th. This year, National will announce gold winners on June 12th. All of our gold winners in the regional program are automatically submitted to national for a second round of scoring. And so we will be notified on June 12th and the students will be notified on June 12th. And this year there's going to be a virtual national ceremony over the summer. I wanna thank the teachers that participated tonight um, in, with all of the students, and I'd personally like to thank Colleen uh, Dupico and Jan Adams Brazil for helping me coordinate the program this year. Their added support, I couldn't have been done it without you, so thank you, ladies. Um, now to help with the student, um, no, I want to do one more thing. Okay. I want to do the art portfolio piece. So as I said, we had one art portfolio submission and winner. An art portfolio is six pieces of artwork. And only students in grade 12 are eligible 
The requirement includes a written statement and the work must be a single cohesive idea, although the work can be of different mediums. So I just want to share with you what our winner's written statement was for her portfolio, which was entitled Perception. And this um, statement is in the hallway, as Superintendent Creedon said, so you can read it when you go out there. But just importantly, the title of the portfolio is Perception, and the artist chose this title because each image contains different references to the different aspects of the word perceptions. And you can read what her thoughts and visions were throughout. So congratulations to our portfolio winner, Alana Santos. Come on up. And we're going to show her artwork, her six, her six pieces. And you said this is her. This is the first winner in fifteen years. Portfolio winner in fifteen. Yes. Years. Our first submission oh, and submission. winner. And winner. Oh. Yeah, A double whammy. Yeah. And these are outside in the hallway. Congratulations. Great job. So now I'm going to hand it over um, to Dana Herm, who is the department chair for the gold and silver winners. Good evening, um, Board of Education, parents, students, um, administration. Um, it is an honor to be here this evening and celebrating our art students and educators and their achievements in the Scholastic Art Awards. The prestige of the Scholastic Art Awards is obviously well known, uh, given what Janet just had mentioned. Um, and it's truly gratifying to witness students who um, had you know, worked um, earlier in their artistic journey and are now achieving our silver and gold awards. Um, like she had mentioned, the percentages are, are very low for our winners. So you may submit artwork as freshmen, um, but through their perseverance and dedication to their craft as they've progressed on throughout the years, they're now silver and gold winners. Um, their awards speak volumes about their growth and their commitment to their craft. So we are here to honor you guys this evening. Um, so when I call your name, please come on up and head over to uh, Ms. Dopico and Ms. Silver winners. Where are the... No. So now we'll have the art. Perfect. There we go. Oh, perfect. Um, so we have... Cardi, uh, Layla Cardi. <laughs> Sabrina Diaz. <laughs> Caitlin Eisentrout. <laughs> Liana Geiger. Alexandria Gallus. <laughs> Jessica Huerta. <laughs> Johara Johnson. <laughs> These students could not be with us this evening. Is that their artwork on the shirt? Yes. yes. Over there? Awesome. Emma Pham. <laughs> Kayla Torres. <laughs> Madison Torres. <laughs> Jocelyn Wilson Gomez. <laughs> and Adriana Sandin. Congratulations to all of our winners. Um, I would like to call up Dr. Williams so she can introduce Adriana Sandin with her video submission. Greetings to the Honorable Board of Education, Superintendent Creedon. It is my distinct honor to introduce tonight Adriana Sandin, who is a 12th grade scholar at Middletown High School. 
She is a highly achieving, multi-talented scholar whose post-secondary goals include attending either U Albany, one of my alma maters, or Onianta to major in biology because she wants to major in the medical field. Additionally, she wants to become an animator. She loves to draw, animate, write stories, and do anything creative. And although it's her passion, she kind of keeps it to herself. In fact, this is the first year that she entered the Scholastic Arts Contest because she didn't have the confidence to put her artwork into submission. We had the great honor of sitting and speaking with Adriana, myself, Mrs. Creedon, Mr. Donahue, Mrs. Ferreira, just to kind of get an understanding of her thought process behind this amazing video that you are about to see. And she so eloquently explained that the dog gun, as her piece is entitled, is a myriad of representations, symbolism, and dichotomous relationships. Ultimately, she wants the viewer to form their own interpretations, but she presents interpretations of what it means to feel safe on playgrounds and in schools for young people. And she presents this comparison of America's love for guns and dogs. She poses the question of what happens when what is meant to protect, protect us actually causes us harm? And what happens when we become victims of a self-fulfilling prophecy? What types of cycles might we unconsciously perpetuate with our rhetoric and actions if we don't stop to take a look at the results of our actions? I am so proud to be on this journey with you. Every time I watch this video, I get emotional and excited. I see something different. Everyone interprets it in a different fashion and walks away with a different message. I could see you on Oprah being interviewed and this being the staple for giving our young people the opportunity to express themselves. So without further ado, I present to you Gun Dog, created and animated by Adriana Sanan. Hello. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, I want to thank everyone for, well, the administrators that I got to talk to for supporting me with this um, uh, piece I've made. Uh, like um, she said, it is my first time entering a, uh, a program, Scholastic, like first time entering a Scholastic program to send in my, like, the stuff I create. Usually I don't, usually I don't share it that much, so this is this is nice, <laughs> and it's it's interesting how it's sort of like united uh, this issue. It's uh, it brings a lot of attention to some people, and it's it's a good reminder of like what is happening. It's an issue in America, uh, gun violence and school shootings. It's pretty relevant. It's nothing new. So uh, I want to thank everyone who's. Been support like supported me my my family I've showed them my friends they gave me their uh, views on it so thank thank you. Great. <laughs> I just 
I have, Pastor, I have one question for. So how long did it take you from your initial thoughts on your creative project and then coming it, putting it to paper and then eventually to video? How long did that process take for you? Um, uh, so I started in early November and it took me like, it took me like a week to like, because this was supposed to be based on a, a um, scholarship thing that um, uh, Scholastic was providing. It was supposed, it was this, there was this like um, talk about, it was a prompt to talk about domestic issues or any international issues happening around the world. So I chose school shootings and gun violence because I thought it's pretty relevant being a high schooler who has to go through, you know, security checks, back checks, something that isn't really um, like um, common in other schools in here. So I came up with the idea, hmm, what if I make a dog as a gun, as like an allegory? Because they could be for an American family could have a dog, and maybe American family could have a gun. And they could be used for protection, but if um, in the wrong hands, they could be too danger and how there are dog attacks. There could be, unfortunately, gun uh, massacres. Um, so it took me like two months to create the animation. Actually, uh, I have two dogs at my house and the, the barking that you heard was voiced by one of my dogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have dogs, so the dad is by PD, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, my dad is also uh, Oh no! <laughs> well, the, they, they do cause a bit of a broken mom. Um, my dog, she she can be a troublemaker, but no, she's not as no. It's not a literal connection to the gun. No. Thank you. So now I'm going to invite um, our instructional leader, Ms. Kuntz, um, to the podium because in addition to um, one of our young people, Alexandria, um, being honored um, for Scholastic Arts tonight, um, she's also being honored for her written word too. So Mrs. Kuntz and Ms. Sheedy. Hello, good evening, President Williams, Mrs. Creedon, Ms. Sedoma, and members of the Board of Education. On behalf of the high school team, Ms. Sheedy and I are honored to recognize one of our outstanding 12th grade scholars, Alex Golis, who has recently achieved a remarkable accomplishment in the world of literature. Alex's poem, Haunted, has been selected for publication in an upcoming anthology by Poetry Nation. This is a testament to her talent, creativity, and dedication to the humanities. Before we hear Alex read her poem, I would like to share a little bit about Alex and why we're so honored to recognize her tonight. Alex is an active and valued member of our school community, participating in various extracurricular activities, including the robotics team, Odyssey of the Mind, and Mock Trial. Her passion for photography shines through her award-winning photographs, some of which you can see on the screen, and she serves as the official photographer of both the unified basketball team and my sister's keeper. She perfectly captures their spirit and the camaraderie of her peers. What makes Alex truly remarkable is her strong work ethic, commitment, commitment to continuous learning, and a passion for pursuing her dreams. Alex initially planned to pursue a cybersecurity career in the military, and it's worth noting that she scored higher than 95% of 12th grade females on the ASVAB in two subtests. But as Alex says, when one door closes, 50 more open. <laughs> Alex has been accepted to, and after graduation, will be attending the University Technical Institute in Morrisville, North Carolina, also known as NASCAR Central, where she will concentrate in pit crew, 
honing her skills in a field that combines her love for mechanics and teamwork. Alex's achievements in both the literary and technical realms serve as an inspiration to all of us around her. So without further ado, we'd like to ask Alex to come to the podium and read her poem, Haunted. I'm being haunted, not by a ghost or a spirit, but I'm being haunted through the thoughts and memories by the constant reminder of something I can't have. I'm being haunted by the things that were once alive, and out of the corner of my eye, I see you. I see you and all the things we had, and now they're gone. I'm being haunted, but my question is, how can I be haunted by someone who isn't dead? Thank you. Thank you for letting me share this with you guys today. Um, I have worked very hard on a lot of my achievements and to be recognized by the board is such an achie another achievement on top of the ones I've already gained so far. So thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. So tonight we wanted to just take a quick moment and make sure that we formally recognize the donation that um, the board and school community accepted this evening. Um, really important to highlight that um, it is incredible to have partnerships um, that impact uh, us positively. So tonight we're honoring the city of Middletown um, and their ability to partner with us to continue to bring economic um, impact to the Middletown City School District and the surrounding community. So you ask, well, why this partnership with the school district and the city and how does it positively impact um, our school district and our communities with um, the economy? When the Middletown City School Districts are host sites um, for New York State public high school athletic events, um, the local economy is positively impacted because thousands of people come to um, the town of Wallkill and the city of Middletown and stay in hotels, eat out, go to grocery stores, go shopping, fill up their cars with gas. Um, it gives us tax revenue and provides employment opportunities for individuals um, to help maintain and run the events. Um, just a few of the events that we have um, coming up are listed here up on the screen. Um, and in order for a school district to receive um, the bid um, for the ability to host the events as a host um, campus like Middletown is for these events that are listed. Um, the goal of that is to get your bid as close as you can to a zero dollar value. That makes you the most competitive bid. So that means that um, you can bring those events continually um, back to the community, continue to generate revenue and offer opportunities for our um, local athletes close to home. Um, so tonight, we accepted a donation from the city of Middletown um, for $5,000 a year for the next three years, which is a total dollar value of $15,000, which enabled us to be incredibly competitive when we put several bids out um, earlier this year in order for us to bring some of those events um, to um, our school district as a host site, which ultimately benefits um, our school community um, and our um, residents. Mr. Coates, anything you want to add? Oh, I'm just so generous and, and really humble and grateful that uh, we were able to partner with the, with the city. And uh, just recently, as uh, Superintendent Creedon stated, we were able to attract boys uh, lacrosse back to uh, Middletown, which is a huge event for us, which we're going to be able to showcase both of our turf fields. And additionally, recently, it's not official yet, but we have we, uh, it will be official in May, so we're kind of have breaking news that we are going to continue our tradition of hosting the boys' soccer championships in Middletown, from uh, which currently next year is our last year, but we were able to secure 
25, 26, and 27. So we are so happy for that. Thank you. So we want to just make sure that we send out an incredible amount of gratitude and thanks um, to uh, the mayor of the city of Middletown. Um, and he's here tonight. Uh, we'll let him get up and say a word or two if he chooses, um, because we can't do this work alone. And this type of partnership is the perfect example of it taking a village to make sure that our young people see success. Mayor? Thank you, and what a, what a great night to come, too, with the acknowledgement of all the, the students and their success. But um, I have Dr. Johnson here, who spoke earlier. He's also a councilman in the city of Middletown, and your very own Kevin Witt, somewhere running around here, also a councilman. And, um, and so we appreciate the acknowledgement, but we, you know, your resolution read that it was a donation, but we look at it as an investment into the, into the school district, into the community, and into uh, not only Orange County, but the greater Middletown area where the impacts are very, very significant. We're hoping that this will set an example for other communities around the greater Middletown area to also get involved in this because this is really, really big dollars. The multiplier is huge um, when you examine the, the, the numbers and um, to showcase this magnificent facility that the taxpayers built over the years and the expanded and the, the recent improvements on the, uh, on the lower end here, it's just very important for us to make as much use of this facility as we can. So I encourage our, our county, the town of Waukee, I believe the county is interested, and um, the, the other communities in this greater Middletown area to become involved in this project because, as I said, it's not giving money to the school district, it's investing in our city and our community in the greater Middletown area. So thank you, thank you for the acknowledgement. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. And Amy? And just Amy? quickly to identify that on your, um, tables in front of you, you have the most recent um, economic impact report that was uh, presented um, in uh, September of this year. And we will be honored to recognize later this year um, Orange County, who has made a significant donation of $15,000 a year for the next three years. Um, so it's really exciting to have those two on board and partnering with us. Amy, I just want to mention first, I want to apologize to the mayor. We probably should have had him up earlier in the agenda so everybody can see it. So hopefully he'll be back, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, each of the next two years as well as part of the uh, donation. So we continue to remind the community of the partnership. And it's not just this that the city provides, is, is you know, on, on track and field championships when we have obviously, you know, 10, <laughs> like uh, over those three days, tens of thousands of people, the parking, um, the city's been nice enough to kind of alleviate, help the parking issue um, on the side streets because that's, you know, and, and the community itself um, who allows us to uh, put these stuff together in order to provide the state of New York and its residents with a great perception of Middletown. Um, but what people don't understand sometimes is um, how close you are to losing these events. You know, um, Athletic Director Coates mentioned about the next three years for soccer, but you know, there were other communities that bid for that. So, <clears throat> and um, we just saw recently uh, the boys basketball state semifinals, which historically have been held at Glens Falls each and every year for decades. They just lost it to Binghamton, not because they didn't have a zero sum bid, but because Binghamton actually gave them a bid that added money to the State Public High School Athletic Association. Um, it's very unusual for communities of our size to actually host events of this si those size. Typically, it's Binghamton, it's Albany, it's Rochester, it's Buffalo. So it's a, a testament to everyone here in the school district, everybody in the city of Middletown, uh, for helping to coordinate all of this and putting it all together because it is a big event. Um, I encourage our other fellow municipalities, as the mayor did, um, to take part as well uh, because the benefits could be extraordinary. And then, you know, we're looking at, this is just state finals, but we also host a lot of sectional finals, which are all of the 16 school districts in uh, Orange, Sullivan, and Dutchess County. I know in softball, we're having the um, softball, championships in May, 
Um, so those are people who may not stay overnight, but they're here eating lunch or dinner or whatever time uh, they are here in the community. So thank you to the city, and hopefully we'll have uh, the mayor back next year doing this again uh, earlier in the agenda. <laughs> Please. Yeah, I, I just like to thank the mayor and the council for inviting uh, us to the state of the city message. I, I thought it was great. And thank you for having our NJOTC unit there and also the chamber singers, the Twin Tower chamber singers. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, Emily Pasella did a, uh, uh, Caroline Pasella did a nice job. Uh, with the uh, uh, God Bless America. So thank you, it was a great evening. Thank you. Thanks, uh, President Williams. Thank, thank you. you. Great, so we're back again this week with um, yet another component um, of our budget proposal. Tonight we'll be focusing on capital and benefits. And again, just always um, showing this same slide so that you know um, all the work that we do is, route, is um, rooted in our vision and mission um, and that we continue to amplify collaboration, trust, growth, and equity. Um, all of our budget components um, are aligned to the district's strategic plan priorities, communication, MTSS, attendance, domains of safety and the code of conduct, and educator development. The budget development process starts months and months and months before we actually come and present the first set of um, recommendations and includes lots of opportunities for us to collaborate with community partners um, and folks that are engaged at both um, the local level and school level. Tonight, capital and benefits um, represents 33% of the total budget. And when we sit down and um, begin to plan out for the um, preparation of the budget, there are several assumptions that we have to consider. And these are things that we remind our community of each time we present a specific segment of the budget. Those include our consumer price index, the tax cap, and mandated teacher retirement, ERS, employee retirement, as well as um, health insurance premiums. Additionally, we consider BOCES services, contractual salaries, um, the BOCES capital project, which was voter approved, as well as foundation aid, which is proposed. And we want to call out that this year, um, the uh, bu governor's budget um, includes a reduction in the foundation aid that was promised to Middletown. So we are facing a $2 million um, shortage uh, in terms of what we were planning our budget on, uh, given the aid that we were promised by the governor. And so this is something that we continue to advocate on um, and stand strongly in opposition of, and are really looking to our um, local and state um, support uh, in order to um, encourage the governor to go back to her budget um, sharpen her pencil a bit and think about how the foundation aid that she's promised to schools um, is needed and valued in order for us to continue programming. In addition, we have to continually have um, in our peripheral vision is the significantly underfunded mandates and how those um, underfunded mandates impact our ability to offer services and programs. And one example of a significantly underfunded mandate is the zero emission um, bus implementation. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so before we go with the capital, um, uh, we'll start, we have two segments. One is capital, one is benefits. Uh, we have seven school buildings, three administrative buildings, uh, a stadium, theaters, we have classrooms, we have 240 acres of land, um, and 1.2 million gross square feet of uh, facilities that we have to maintain and clean. Um, so in addition to that, we have snow removal, we have lawn cutting, we have plumbing, we have electrical, we have painting, we have um, a salt container over there for uh, inclement weather, we have fuel pumps, we have HVAC technicians, custodians, cleaners, grounds. So it's quite an extensive, um, 
crew that we have to maintain um, all the facilities. So that's what it's included in the capital. So we'll just go through it a little bit. The operations um, is 1620 on your um, budget sheets. So that's an increase this year of a little bit over 10%. Um, a lot of it is um, what we have done in the past. We used to purchase um, services in this current year for next year, but the auditors are frowning upon that for us carrying money from this year into next year. So that's why you're seeing that significant. We're trying to shift everything to be purchased in July, and then we have all our services in one year. So uh, that's why there's a little bit over 10% this year. The maintenance um, is broken out. If you see, we broke out school resource officers. We also have, we want to continue our initiative for putting uh, swipeable locks on every classroom. And then next year, we're focusing on the high school. We have, we're going to be, hopefully by June, we'll have all the other schools done. In the high school, will be the only one we don't have done with all swipeable locks. So if you add up the maintenance, uh, the school resource officers, and the security, that actually equals your total maintenance on your sheets in the budget. Um, you'll see that the school resource officers are up almost 11%. And that's really just based on contractual um, agreements we have with the municipalities. Mike, can you just say what the swipe locks are so people... Yeah, so everybody has these badges right here. They're all, every door we're trying to um, secure with a swipe badge. And so we know who's coming. We can lock down any building with a button. You know, that's what we're trying to get to for health and safety. Uh, right now, Presidential Park was done in 2013 when we built it. Uh, Maple Hill is up and running. Uh, they're working on Monhagen next week. Carter's next and Truman Moon. And then um, next year we're gonna do the high school. We're waiting on Twin Towers during the capital project and we'll have that totally completed. And then we have our judgments and claims that come in. Sometimes we have tax tertiaries, we have different judgments uh, throughout the year. So that remains the same. Um, sometimes we use it, sometimes we don't, but we'd like to have some money in that line just to maintain that um, fund balance, that um, code. Um, we also have in the capital, this is where we pay all of our debt services. We have serial bonds, uh, bond anticipation notes, and energy performance contracts. So the serial bonds come after you do, so if you do a capital project, which we're getting ready to do Twin Towers, we'll do what they call a ban. We borrow money, a bond anticipation note. So when you're done with the, when you're at a certain point of the project completed, then you go to a serial bond, right? So then, mm -hmm. so we have multiple layers of financing going on. And so that's why we have principal and interest um, on those. And then we have our energy performance contracts, which are kind of older. They're almost phased out. They're kind of, we're actually seeing a decrease in the payments there. And, and you see on our serial bonds, they've actually gone down a little bit. But over the next couple of years, we're going to start seeing some more serial bonds increase because we have some of the projects that we're just finishing and we're going to be going to bonding in June. Um, so, and then the, you know, the big one up here is the transfer to capital. Um, you'll see that uh, last year we transferred 9 million. Uh, that was for Twin Towers and for the food service uh, refrigerator and cooling. And so this year, we, we're not going to we're not going to transfer cap to any money to capital. Um, and we're trying to limit any of those projects now until we get Twin Towers up and running. We finally got the permit. We're going to start digging in June and for the addition. So we just feel like we just want to focus on one one big project right now. Um, and then and down the road, uh, maybe in December or next year, we'll start doing some more capital projects. Mike, could you tell us what the numerals, I see the zeros, the six, though, under the bond anticipation? Yeah, the column had shifted. I thought I fixed it on the PowerPoint. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be, yeah, it's supposed to be, yeah. 156. Sorry. Yeah, okay. sorry about that. Yeah, it shifted. And I thought I fixed it before I came up. It, it this, is, this is the graph that's important to note that the solid financial history of the school district when everything converts over to the serial bonds and you're paying principal and interest, this district will get very good favorable interest rates, rates because we are in such good financial ground as far as a healthy fund balance and stuff. And that saves the, the taxpayer hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars over the life of the debt in interest payments. So that's really important. And also our Moody rating is very good. So the other thing, when uh, Jeff Smith, our financial advisor, was, and some of the things that we try to do every year um, is pay down the ban, the bond anticipation note, before it becomes a bond. So we're actually borrowing less money, right? So you can reduce the payments as well. So um, that's our capital. So right now, the capital is actually, you're seeing a decrease of 16 16.5%. And that's because of the transfer to capital, right? So in the first previous two budgets we did, there were um, admin and instructional, they went up. And then this is down, so it's going to kind of balance it out. So 
for the year, right? And that's kind of what we do, planning, making sure, like, you know, Ms. Crean said, we start months on advance. I've already started for two years from now how we're going to finance some of the things at Twin Towers and just keep our construction and all our buildings health and safety. Um, so you're always trying to think forward, and that's why we had the five-year um, building condition survey. They come in, they give us a list of things that we got to focus on, and we go through and say, okay, here's our priorities. What do we really need to focus on to make sure we can have a school open and everybody's health, their, their safety is um, paramount in that building. Now, in November, the voters went out and approved statewide the referendum that allows small city school districts to increase their debt capacity yeah, if they wanted to, which is yeah. really important. Yep. Do we have any long-term strategy to utilize that, or are we? We're, we're under that right now, significantly. Yeah. Um, you know, if you start going into that over, then you're really going after it. We don't have all the capital to pay that, so we're going to have to Got go to, to the taxpayer to start paying. Yeah. You know, but I, I think, you know, as, as debt runs off, you want to keep up with it yeah. mm -hmm. because yeah. otherwise we, it makes it difficult down the road to... So you always want to have debt, right? Because yeah. the um, we get about 75% aid from the Correct. state, right? So they're paying, we get a revenue source for, for the pay the bonds and uh, ban. So we always want to keep that moving, right? And keeping uh, construction and, you know, like I said, health and safety in the buildings, right? That's That's what we need to do. We need to make sure that staff can come in, students can come in, and... You know, we can have instruction every day. So that's our focus. So that's the capital. John has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. Yeah. I didn't see you. Thank you for the presentation, Mike. Uh, a couple of questions are, at this point, our Moody's bond rating is? Yeah, well, it's AA. Uh, I think it's AAA, uh, big A and two small Okay, AAA. And, you know, People who might not be familiar with this, why is that important? About, uh, well, it's important, as Mr. Estrada said, we get um, yeah. great, we, we have great people, uh, many people will apply to buy our bonds or that will sell our bonds. And so we, we get favorable interest rates and they also give us points back because we're doing you know, such good business. Um, and we the have second uh, question, comment, in the, new, in the latest edition of On Board, which is our publication of Board of Education publication from uh, the state state school boards. Apparently, the legislator ha legislature has rejected the governor's proposal. Mm -hmm. And if that holds, do we know what that means? Might mean for us. I mean, what we're anticipating or hoping for is, um, you know, we've had the great support mm -hmm. of, um, you know, the mayor, um, our um, congressman, uh, and uh, senators. And what we're hoping for is that we close that gap so that the foundation aid, um, that gap of $2 million that we see right, right now, yeah. that if the governor goes back to the budget, that we'll see that that will reduce. And also, I think there is a the legislature is concerned about the uh, uh, safe, harmless provision. Yes. They don't want that. Uh, they don't want to the governor to eliminate that, which I don't think we were affected this year by safe, harmless, were we? Because we're a growing district. Yeah, we were not impacted by that, but that is correct. They're advocating very strongly on that behalf. And you're going to a meeting, are you not, with the some of the legislators and to advocate for our position? Yeah, we have the opportunity as a small city coalition um, to be with my brothers and sisters at the small city and advocate in that avenue. Um, Mr. Tuttle works with the business officials and those advocacy groups. And then tomorrow we have an opportunity um, to meet with um, uh, Scoofus and Brabinac in order to advocate on behalf of the county and the impact on local school districts. That's going to be held at Goshen. Thank you. Are there any more questions about the capital? No? Okay, so we'll go into the benefits. Um, the benefits uh, this year, we're seeing um, quite an increase in our teachers' retirement system. Um, the employee retirement system, almost 7%. Um, the Social Security uh, is up about 2%, and our workers' comp, uh, about 2%. So what happens is when we have our ERS and our TRS keeps increasing, um, you know, we've hired a significant amount of staff, right, and then we're responsible for part of their contribution to the retirement system. So um, that's where we're seeing the big increase um, on those levels right there. And then um, life insurance, that's for mostly for administrators. That remains stagnant at um, the same level for the past few years. 
Um, unemployment insurance, that's kind of remaining the same, although obviously we're not in a state where we're un um, laying off people right now, so that's kind of good. Uh, disability insurance remains the same. Uh, we're seeing an increase in our hospital and medical. As you know, we've switched from uh, our own self-funded plan back to Orange Ulster, um, the health plan. So we're just taking some money and putting it in there. Uh, and again, as the premiums and the, and the, co the cost that we're experiencing with claims, um, and I was just at the BOCES meeting the other day, you know, all the, all the claims are just on a rise. There's these big significant claims that are coming in, district all the district-wide, county-wide now. So we were experiencing it locally, and now it's county-wide. So I, had got, I got a good glimpse of what was actually happening there. Um, the welfare and benefits, that is for, that's contractual, that we pay um, a certain amount of money to the, the collective bargaining units uh, each year based on the number of members they have in the group and that number remains the same. So we're looking at um, almost 10% increase uh, on the benefit side. Um, really just, you know, we've been trying to get to where we have enough staff, security, um, emotional support, social emotional support, and classroom teachers and administrators and things like that. So that's where we're seeing the 10% um, budget increase there. So um, this year, uh, just give me a glimpse. Um, boy, I really messed up on those slides. Didn't I? <laughs> So the, um, the proposed budget, what we've done for the past uh, four, we did the administrator, we did the program, and then we've done capital benefits. We're looking at a $261,752,136 budget. So that's an increase of about 3.19%. Um, and that's the, bud that's the number I'm super focused on, but that's gonna depend on where the governor comes in for revenues and what the board decides to do uh, about closing our gap to get to that number. So. Um, we'll have more conversation when we, next time we meet and we'll do the revenue side. But that's where we are in that piece. So that, but that, so people don't get confused, that is not the figure that we have to, that coincides with the tax. No, no that's not our tax. Our 2% no. tax limit right. that we have before we'd have to go to a super majority on the vote. <clears throat> Um, but I also do want to make the comment, I sent out an email to my fellow board members, and I thank you guys as well, um, last week about stories that are starting to creep in from throughout the state um, in regards to layoffs. Um, there are a lot of school districts right now that because of the financial situation they're in, based on the governor's proposal right now, that they're anticipating laying off a lot of staff um, I think I've seen Carmel locally, more locally to us, a couple of Long Island schools, some upstate. Um, you know, I, I, it's, it's something that we need just to keep an eye on. Um, I don't think it'll affect us this year, but if you continue to have foundation aid proposals like the governor just made this year, eventually that'll catch up um, with us. But, you know, um, the good thing is that we're in good sound financial footing, and that's because of years if not a decade, more than a decade of really sound financial budgeting um, that's led to this. And so when you see the storms, you know, you have that rainy day, the, the rainy days are coming. And so it's important to be in a good position because, um, you know, there's strong headwinds right now uh, budget wise. So hopefully, I think the budget's gonna be fine and I think it's gonna make up, um, you know, knock on wood, the shortfall for us based on what I'm hearing up in Albany. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that next year we won't have an issue, so. Yeah, I don't think that we believe at this point that we will be in a position, um, you know, that some of those other districts are in and the other piece that they have complicating it is some of those districts are experiencing, um, you know, more dramatic um, enrollment um, declines. And, you know, we're not seeing that. So I think that while, um, you know, we believe that we will have to come out to the taxpayer um, with a little bit of a different budget than we have in the past, you know, it won't be at zero, um, or we won't be giving back to the taxpayer like we have done. Um, we don't believe that we'll be exceeding the tax cap. And I, I know Mrs. Blumenau and Mr. Perino have a question, just one last one. When you meet with the legislators, I think it's important for our district to emphasize that somewhere along this calculation, there has to be a benefit for enrollment increases. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that there are no enrollment increases, we're pretty much the only school district between Albany and Westchester that has enrollment increases mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. But the adjustment in foundation aid 
you know, every once in a while they'll throw in a kicker, a little extra because for school districts that have enrollment increases, but they typically don't take care of them because there aren't that many. So I think um, for our perspective, in addition to the foundation aid, um, you know, asking our legislators, what are you gonna do for districts that have continual enrollment increases uh, to help offset those increases in addition to the foundation aid is very important for our district. Yeah, we agree. We have super engaged, um, you know, um, elected officials. We really do. Um, they've been asking Mike and I to provide information to them with regards to our thoughts on the governor's proposed budget, as well as some of those impacts. What does our enrollment look like? Because our story is uniquely different than some of our um, local districts. And so we appreciate the time and attention that they've given to us so that when they advocate, they're advocating for our voice and not just every school district in the county, but Middletown specifically. You know, the, the problem here is that we have a, an issue making up the, uh, somehow making up the shortfall. But the second problem is the taxpayers. This, first of all, it's not a wealthy community. I mean, there are pockets of wealth around, obviously, but not a wealthy community. I, I, I read a figure that credit card debt in the nation is something like $1.3 trillion with, uh, uh, with a record number of credit card defaults. So, uh, so uh, we, and I know you do this, we, we have to keep this in mind that uh, it's not wealthy, we have to watch what we do with the, with the tax, uh, with a tax levy here. I mean, people are just not able to pay. I mean, the inflation is terrible. You go to the supermarket, you get a little bag, it's a hundred, a hundred bucks or so. The inflation, uh, the inflation rate, uh, uh, they say it's only 3.1 percent, but it doesn't take into consideration food or energy, which affects everyone in one way or the other. So, again, you know, when we come up with a final levy, let's be extremely conservative. So that's my piece tonight. We just have to. So, Mr. Prino, every year we go through this cycle, right, waiting for the governor's uh, yep. budget. We've been doing it. It's my eighth budget, and every year I've been waiting. And you've you know, done a good job. Yeah, you've done an excellent job. Right. Um, and that never comes in on time, right? So we're always sweating, right? So sometimes we have to put the budget, you know, out to the voters because we have to adopt it. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes yep. the budget's not done. So we're, you know, taking our best guess at that. Um, just again to reiterate, this is just the total budget increase, right? This is not the tax levy. This right. is not going uh, out to the I understand right that. Yeah. We'll talk about that at the next meeting. I'll show you the tax cap calculations um, based on all of our, all the different calculations that you can have in this thing. Um, so we're very aware of what we're trying to do and keep balance everything, right? So my, my fear and when Jeff Smith was here giving us the financial forecast, he's a, he was very, very adamant about the next, this year we're good. The state is going to be in trouble the next couple of years after that. So we have to make sure we're maintaining that, right? We don't want to go down where we don't have all our programs. Um, I mean, we have a significant amount of programs in this in this community. Yeah, and, we do. You know, just just for instance, our buses they travel two million miles a year, right? That's a lot. That's that's a significant amount of mileage on a bus. So it's important for us to maintain these things, right? To get yeah. the children to school and to all their programs. So. Okay. Any other questions? Paula, do you have a question? Just a quick, oh. um, if you go back one slide to our to the um, insurance. Um, just out of curiosity, I know several years ago we went to self-insured and then we made the educated decision and choice to go back to, um, to go back to Orange Ulster, yeah. Yeah, the co-op, basically. What is the savings? So um, in 2017, we went to self-funded, and then we saw significant savings over those several years, right? The past two years alone wiped out that savings. Mm -hmm. We went right back to where we were in 2017. So I don't know the exact savings. Um, I would have to, we're going to have to go through a year of cycle. It's going to be higher. Uh, yeah, it's going to be higher. But, you know, the premiums are higher. You know, we're, we're getting to a point, yeah, we're getting to a point where health insurance is one of the driving things in any industry. You go mm -hmm. in private industry. It's way worse for those folks. I mean, they pay a, a ton of money for, insurance yeah. And yeah. and I think our insurance is pretty good. I mean, it covers a lot. You know, it's, it's a pretty good insurance program. Um, so we used to have a $5 million reserve for health insurance. 
And so now we're just kind of putting it, you know, into this, into the general fund now. So that's where we're, we're just trying to balance it that way. But one of the things we've had the opportunity to get a bit of a window into now that we're part of the health consortium and Mike represents the district at those meetings is just how high the insurance claims are coming in, you know, across the area. Across so the area. we are taking a long sigh of relief that the burden of those high cost um, health insurance um, submittals are no longer just on our shoulders. They are spread out across the um, consortium, which is going to ultimately save um, the district a large amount of money in the coming years. Thank you. Any questions? Anybody? So just to quickly remind folks that um, on April 10th will be our next opportunity to engage with the community about the budget. We'll do a virtual lunch break option at 12 o'clock. Um, come join us, ask questions about the budget, dig into it in any way that you want. And on that same day, we will do um, a budget recap community meeting. That's an in-person session. So all of the in-person sessions are right here in the Library Media Center beginning at 6 p.m. And then up next at the April board meeting is revenues. And just some snapshots here to remind us why we do the work that we do. We want to thank you for the opportunity to review the budget this evening. And just want to thank all the presentations are still up on the website. And then you'll see what the board members get um, with account codes and everything. You'll see what the proposals are there. Okay. There's going to be a baby up there. Some state champion up there, I guess. What is state it? champion. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's move on. Um, board member roundtable. Board member roundtable um, tonight. Uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do like we did, like we did for uh, community reports. So I'm gonna start over with Mr. Estrada for board member roundtable. Sure. Um, thank you, Pastor Williams. And I want to thank you and your generation of families for your support of Middletown over decades and decades and decades and decades and decades. I'll leave it at that. Um, every board member, I, I gave each of you um, what's called a district data set. Um, BOCES this year has decided to kind of personalize by district some of the information for each school district in, um, ahead of their budgets. This one's Middletowns. Since I serve as a liaison for Chester, I also have a packet for them for their board meeting. Um, but as you can see, it gives you some at least simple information about how many of our students participate in BOCES, either through their career and tech programs and their special education our special education enrollment um, at each of their buildings over there. So you can see that by far um, the number of students that have taken advantage of career in tech um, has gone from 346 students in the 18-19 school year to 427 um, for the last school year. I don't know what that number is for this school year yet, but um, I believe it's even higher um, than the 427. And this also shows you kind of the different trades that our students here at Middletown are interested in or have shown an interest in. We've seen a marked increase from 43 students to 85, almost double uh, in the health science areas, um, dental, uh, emergency medical, tech, pharmacy technician, things of that nature. Um, also a very large increase in the culinary arts as well. So. Um, our kids are, are really taking advantage of just about every career opportunity that BOCES has to offer. And I think it augments a lot of our programs here. And I think it, it, the fact that more and more students are getting the word that there's other options as far as career opportunities and they have an, op an, an ability to take advantage of that through BOCES, I think is a testament. And I want to give kudos to this Board of Education and the school administration. A lot of you don't know, but a lot of school districts limit, because of budgetary reasons, the number of students that are allowed to go to BOCES. So let's say you're in Chester or in Goshen, they'll set a cap of, we're only going to let 25 students go to BOCES this year. Uh, because we can't afford through our budget process. We don't allow that here in Middletown. If you want to go to BOCES, 
you get a chance to go to BOCES. So uh, regardless of what the budget ramifications are for the school district. So I want to commend our board and our district for doing that because not everybody does that. And that's become, you're hearing more and more parents of those other districts that are limiting the number. Um, complaining why that's happening. So, and then our uh, special There's education 450, numbers. 450, just so you know, 450 students. This 450 year. this year, there you go. So another 30 student increase. Um, and then our special education programs over the years has stabilized, which is a good thing when you think about it. Um, because they're either, they're either here within our own, like my son used to take advantage of, <clears throat> and those that are at BOCES are definitely you know, in programs that we just can't offer from a, um, a monetary standpoint. In other words, if you have, uh, let's say, a blind student, there may only be two in Middletown, and there may be three in Newburgh, and five in whatever. So that's why um, there's a program in BOCES for those students, because um, all of the districts can take advantage of it, where it would be difficult for us just to educate two um, students that fell under that particular um, disability. So hopefully this is helpful as we make our decision moving forward for BOCES. Uh, I have a quick question I want to ask uh, Mr. Estrada. Uh, um, if you could tell me a little bit about or us a little bit about these two programs where a great deal of our students are attending, the Raymond Kramer program and Strive, why are those numbers, uh, what is um, those are different, so each of these buildings um, houses different special education right. programs that are specific for students. And the STRIVE program is one that is specific. I think, my, I think that was one actually that my son took part of in, okay. in early on in his life. Um, and it's, you see a lot of autistic kids, okay. high functioning autistic kids okay. that are getting more and more involved with, uh, it, what happens is you start off in a small classroom and then they'll test kids out at lunch with other kids because typically um, a lot of kids have a lot of sensory issues. They don't want to be involved large. So it's kind of teaching them to start mainstreaming uh, more and more in the hopes that eventually they go back to district and they're not traumatized by, you know, heading into a cafeteria with 300 kids, you know, um, stuff like that. So. All of these different programs have different types of disabilities involved yeah. to them. They specialize in them. And are these two programs here, are they more local? Or Because I, I, um, I know some autistic students, and they have to travel quite a bit of a distance to, um, to actually receive the services. So. Yep, and um, I know Superintendent Creedon um, probably has more knowledge on it than mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. But my very similar to how we would send somebody to BOCES to share in the service with other districts, the same thing bodes well for BOCES in general. And then there might be facil facilities, you know, it's unfortunate there are some facilities where it may be an hour or two away. Yeah. And Raymond we're T. Kramer, students yeah, the, for those that. two particular programs where we send the most students, which is why you see that high number, because those are Goshen programs. So those are local. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Pastor, I had a couple questions. Mm -hmm. One statement. Uh, I'm disappointed to see that in construction, our blue collar workers, there was a, a significant decrease there. Yeah, and I noticed in, in, uh, also in um, security and yes. law enforcement was down yeah. big time. The construction decrease, though, is because we opened up a graduation pathway here. This is brand uh -huh. new this he year here. Um, and they're actually using the construction site at Twin Towers. Um, middle school as part of the programming. So it's because we opened a brand new graduation pathway. Mm -hmm. Don't go away. My other question has to do with my favorite topic, OM. I see that they do support services. Is any of our cost um, BOCI aidable for the Odyssey of the Mind? Yes, and they provide like a technical assistance. So they coordinate um, really all of the Odyssey of the Mind um, coordinators and coaches for the region. Thank you. All right, Ms. Romero. We had our next Diamonds and Pearls event scheduled for 410 during family night, but due to the many events we have going on on that night, simultaneously, we have decided to reschedule. Please stay tuned for the next, um, for the new date. 
I want to congratulate all of the award recipients. Alana, she did an amazing job. Um, Alexandria, beautiful poem. And they are both very talented. Lastly, I want to say that I am very proud to be part of this board because it is a true representation of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and most important, a representation of the scholars who attend our, um, our district. Everyone on this board is passionate, dedicated, and committed to the success of all the scholars who do attend here. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Bison. I have nothing to report, Pastor. Thank you for the opportunity, though. Thank you. Ms. Blumenau. Mrs. Blumenauer. I just want to say thank you to Pastor Williams for your bold leadership and support and dedication to our district. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rett. Yeah, I want to take the time to commend our team efforts as well. Um, again, um, as um, Ms. Romero stated, you know, there's a collective um, cohesiveness here where we respect one another and we have a goal of supporting our students first. Again, I also wanted to commend the artistic um, um, presentation here today. It was just totally awesome to the point where I'm wondering, is it possible we can get our hands on some of them pieces? I would love to have some in my living room. There's some really nice pieces. Right, there. some copies. <laughs> Thank you. If one's missing, we know where we're going. <laughs> Mr. Perino. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, Bishop Williams. You know, I'd like to also thank you for your service to this uh, district and to the community. And although uh, Mitch Williams is not here tonight, uh, I really, it's difficult to think of too many people who have done more for the youth of this district, whether uh, uh, conducting various tournaments or coaching or, or whatever. So, Mitch, you're not here tonight, but uh, that's my thought on this. Um, for the past uh, year, a year and a half, I've been beating the drums on reading, the importance of reading. As a matter of fact, I've written to a, a, a number of the uh, legislators and to members of the state ed department, not as a board member, but as a private citizen who had, and a veteran educator who spent many years in education. And apparently not because of me, but there, there must be an uh, outcry on this because as you know from last week, uh, the governor has put money into reading at the uh, local levels and we had an excellent presentation on the all-in night on reading. We're also partnering, partnering with, uh, through our library, uh, uh, Ms. Adamo has uh, met uh, with uh, Bridget Manigo, who's excellent on, in, uh, through our library, Mrs. York, I believe. Um, another interesting point is that SUNY at New Paltz is now offering a micro-credential in reading. Uh, and they have obtained a grant for $6.37 million from the IBIS Foundation to support this. And this program was featured in the New Paltz Alumni Magazine. Very, very, uh, it seems like a good program. Uh, for members of the uh, members of the staff, and no matter what reading method you use, and now we seem to be going from whole language to phonics, but also a combination. It, none of it is going to be. They're not going to be successful unless parents get involved. Parents must read with and to uh, their children, and. We had uh, someone come to the mic and talk about the behavior of students. And, and no matter what we do, it's not going to be totally successful again unless parents say, when you're in school, this is what you have to do. These are the rules when you go to school. And I suggest before, uh, before the school year starts that we conduct live as and virtual programs on our 
expectations, our behavioral expectations for students from kindergarten through grade 12. Because we know there are problems, and we know that we can't solve them all. It starts in the home, just like reading. Uh, uh, proficiency in reading starts in the home. And I think if uh, individuals who become in elementary grades proficient in reading will create less problems as they move through the grades. Because I think sometimes they become, let's say, depressed that they can't keep up with the other, uh, with other students. One of the reasons they can't read. So I could say more, but I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Freddie Williams. I'd just like to commend and uh, congratulate all our students that were highlighted tonight. And um, I just look forward to doing more great work with this team. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, let me start out with that. Um, commend all of the students that came forth that we recognize tonight. I think this was great. And I'm, I agree with Mr. Red. I'd like to have a couple of those pieces um, hanging in my living room as well. Copies. Copies of those. Um, the work is outstanding so much. Um, so I'm going to, most of the time I sit here at this desk and, um, and, and things are said and things are done. Um, I don't say a lot. I don't say a lot. And I, a lot of times you guys know over the years, I, I let a lot of things roll off my back. I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. I'm a big man. I'm a grown man. I can handle certain things. And it's without question that there's going to be people that disagree with you people that don't always understand. I appreciate, uh, you know, you know, the words that you just said. I appreciate that. Um, not necessary, not necessary though, I do, even though I do appreciate it. Um, I have no problem with, with people who disagree. I have no problem. We're not always gonna be in agreement. Um, and so, most of the time, I don't address certain things. Over the years, you know that we've sat here at this table, and a lot of things have been said. I've let it roll off my back, and I haven't said anything, and we've kept moving. Um, because I'm here, for the, I'm here for the kids. I'm here for the children. I'm here for the community at the end of the day. But tonight, I'm going address, to address this. I'm going to address this because um, it's one thing to disagree. It's another thing to be disrespectful. And I'm a grown man. Anybody that knows me in this community, anybody that I've encountered that you, we've had disagreements, I've never treated you with any disrespect. We run into each other into a supermarket. We run into each other in the street. I have always treated you with respect. Disagree or not, we're still neighbors. Tonight was, was disrespectful at best, cowardless at worst. The reason I say that is because it's one thing to say some things to somebody when you don't know what I think, you have no idea of what my thoughts on the subject are and have never had a conversation with me about it. I have always been accessible to anybody over the years of service here and even prior to that for discussion. With that being said, um, I'm not mad. Uh, I'm not mad. I'm disturbed, a little upset, but I offered the opportunity uh, to the gentleman that came to the, the mic. He's not, here to, he's not here now. I'll never say anything negative about him, but he's not here now. But I offered the opportunity to sit down and have a discussion. Let's talk, because I'll be honest. We could disagree, but what was said tonight was personal. It was personal. And, and, and I know that because I'm a preacher, because I'm a pastor, everyone thinks that you know, there's certain things you can say. And maybe my response, some people might think that's weakness. I'm a preacher, but I'm not no punk. I stand behind what I say. I stand behind what I do. And I serve a greater, I serve a greater God than any of this nonsense that people say and things that are done. 
My integrity and my character is something that I've stood behind my entire life, my family, and will continue to stand behind. Grace says, let's talk the real. Grace says, thank you. Can I have another, can I have another 30 seconds? Is that all right with everybody? I won't take it unless, I won't take it unless you all say. Grace says, Grace says, let's come to a, let's sit down and let's talk. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a hard person to get along with. I'm not. I'm not a hard person to get along with. So somebody told me sometime once, once ago, don't take things so personal. But what was said tonight was personal. What said, to, what said tonight was personal because it was directed directly at me by name. And I never would have done that to anybody. Never. Never would have done that to anybody and never have done it to anybody. So, bro, I know you get the message. I'm not going to invite you to my porch. But if you want to sit down and have some coffee and have a conversation about what happened tonight and what's going on and find out what I really think, then let's do it. You're my neighbor. And we've always been able to talk about things reasonably whether we've disagreed. I would never stand up at a time and that attack somebody when I can't, when you're not allowed to respond. So that's my response tonight. Thank you, everybody. We continue to do the work. That's all we're gonna do. We're gonna continue to do the work. There's a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do, but we continue to do the work. Thank you. Can, yeah, Thank can you, you just, who gave us this? Those, those come from Jillian. Oh, okay. From the workshop. Thank you. All right. Thank From the you. workshop. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Mr. Bison has has um, motion to adjourn. Seconded by Mrs. Blumenau. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It so passes. We're out. Our next meeting will be when? April 2nd. April 4th. April 4th. April 4th. We'll see you then.